goodness gracious. All right, guys, my next guest is a conceptual visionary. She is consistently cultivating her artistic reach through business ventures, including music, literature, film, and television. She has executive produced music and film projects, as well as consulting for artists, media personalities, and entertainment startups. And she's here in the talk of the town right now. Melani, now your mic is not on, Melani. Turn your mic on. It's on now. Okay, great. Okay. Melani <laughs> Isabel is here, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? I am fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm running around like crazy today. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And uh, me going here and there. Children are coming in and out of town. So, But I'm glad to be here right now. I'm here with well, you, and I'm glad to be here. I am glad you are here. And tonight you're going to talk about how to live free and how to let go of life's baggage. Uh, you wrote a book a few years ago, right? I did. I did. It's called The Freedom of Letting Go, Apprehending Faith and Overcoming Fear. Uh, what do you find difficult for people to let things go? Because people tend to harness and hold on to things forever, it seems. Um, I can't say what it is for others, but I know for me it was just fear. And fear kind of permeated, you know, everything that I was trying to do, whether it was business, fear in marriage, fear in relationships. It was just kind of in everything. So uh, for me, it was definitely the fear of whatever that was. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Um, so so when you talk about how to live free, what are some of the key yeah. characteristics that people can utilize today? to live free because a lot of people are bound by past traumas. A lot of people are bound by choices and decisions and they have mm -hmm. caged up things that anchored. Uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday about being anchored like uh, a yacht. You know, it's like you have a anchor mm -hmm. on your, on your leg and you're, you're, you're stuck at dock and you want to go out into the ocean, but you can't go out in the ocean because of all the things that you're holding, that's holding you down. It's almost like a chain. So how, how, what yeah. are some of the, 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 the tips and insights you give people on how they can begin to live free? Well, um, obviously, I'm, first of all, I would probably go back to my faith. And really for me, it was digging in the word and not just reading it, but actually applying mm -hmm. some of the just basic principles. Um, you know, just loving myself so that if I love myself, I have an easier time loving other people. Mm -hmm. And if I'm beating up myself, then I'm going to beat up somebody else. So I think that that was one of the first things. But then just to um, you, you, you have to take it easy on yourself. Yeah. Like mistakes come, mm -hmm. uh, falling. That's just a part of life. And I think sometimes we dwell in those places too long. Mm -hmm. So if we make a mistake in business, we tend to carry that. Like you said, the anchor, you carry it with you. Yeah. And, and what happens is you just keep filling up that bag full of boulders and it gets heavy. That's true. That's true. It gets heavy oh. and heavy and heavy, oh. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets heavier and heavier. So I, I think just, and then here's something practical, I think, is just deal with one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, don't try to unload the whole bag. It takes time. That's why I said you have to uh, be kind to yourself. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, that's a big one for me is self-introspection is cool, but there's a point where you just got to stop trying to analyze every wrong move that you've made and say, you know what? I did it. Let's move on. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> you know? um, I, I would say those are some of my tips. I have more, I'm sure. But those are like the immediate ones that come to mind. You know, the crazy thing I tell people, Milani, is it is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. So you can't really you can't really be what it's going to be. <laughs> it's going to be that. It's going to be that because I think yeah. we look at life and yeah. we be like, OK, uh, I did this and then we harp on, I did that, or then I did this. And it's like, Hey, once you've done something, you can't undo it. So now you have to adapt. You just got to listen, listen. And you know what? And it's, it's inevitably a lesson in it. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's kind of like, in some cases you have to say, I was, I was supposed to do that. And I know that sounds like counterintuitive to a degree, but 
if that hadn't have happened, then this wouldn't have happened. Right. So, I mean, it's all in God's plan, as they say. Yeah. Uh, now, now throughout your life, and, and we all have dealt with things. I'm not sure how how COVID has affected you or, or your family, because you have a daughter that lives out here in Los Angeles, right? I do. She just came back home too. <laughs> no. But <laughs> oh, yeah, now we, the cases out here are worse. My God, y'all, y'all on lockdown for real. But now my son's there. So, uh, um, she, and, and she's just kind of in between, she's deciding if she wants to move out of the country. She, you know, they're young, they'd be doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but, um, I mean, f- I think it, COVID has really for us been a blessing in that it forced us to slow down. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have had so much fun with our children who are now the youngest is 18. Mm-hmm. So for a while we had all of them home and it hadn't been like that for some years because they were all off in college and so from that standpoint it's been good but for me it was good because i was forced to stop doing so many projects Mm -hmm. and i didn't realize that i really was kind of killing myself slowly with the level of stress that i had of trying to live up to you know the conceptual visionary with all the projects and then Mm -hmm. you know the little TV, little film, little this. And I was, I was burned out in 2019. I really was, but I wasn't really listening to my body. You know, Mm -hmm. I just kept pushing and I was on planes and trains and whatever. And COVID was just like, Oh, you're done. Stop. Stop. (laughs) You know, get, gather yourself and really prioritize And I realized like my, my family is just, I knew it, but I now really know Mm-hmm. Like my family and my health and my well-being, my mental health, and the same for my family. So I'm I'm thankful for it. Yeah. Now, now for those that don't know, uh, Milani is married to a retired NFL football player, one of my favorite college football mm-hmm. players, the best to ever do it at Notre Dame. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, yes. I love watching him at Notre Dame thank run you. kickoffs back and thank all kinds of stuff. Rocket Ishmael, and although I'm not a Cowboys fan, he's he's one of my favorite <laughs> Cowboys uh, players as well. well. You got other teams to pick. You got other teams to pick from. He did the Raiders, did Carolina. You know, give us one of them. <laughs> okay, Carolina, because that's that's actually how I met there y'all <laughs> in, in Carolina in Charlotte. Um, yes, but yes, I wanted, yes. I wanted to ask. When you look at, because a lot of people talk about the difficulties of maneuvering through just marriage alone, not let alone married to someone who's in the national spotlight. And when we're talking about self improvement, mm-hmm. at any point along that journey, did you find that you lost yourself in a sense? And how did you regain yourself without it affecting your marriage and ripping up your whole entire family? You said that really nice, <laughs> but the reality is, <laughs> um, it was a couple times I lost myself. Um, <laughs> it, it wasn't as easy as it should have been on the marriage. Um, yeah, I had to go to counseling, and yeah, it was just not that 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 perfectly wrapped bow you just wrapped up right there. Um, no, it it at different times. Um, <laughs> I, I got married at 23. He was 25. So we were pretty young. He was at the height of his career as well. Um, so like immediately I was kind of pushed towards the back. Mm-hmm. And, you know, prior to that, I was already in the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. So I was like trying to quickly get back to that. Like, and, you know, and then after the third city and the third team, I was just like, well, you know what? Yes, it's not going to happen for me. (laughs) I'm just going to sit down somewhere. And there was a lot I didn't know, like as a young woman and a young mother, because I hadn't yet planted my feet in terms of my identity. Uh And my husband always says, he's like, man, I I think it's so important for people to kind of get a sense of who they are before they jump into a marriage, because you're going to go looking for that. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I was opening and, and my husband is so kind. He was very supportive. I'm opening businesses. and But the reality is I was having babies back to back and I was mm-hmm. moving from city to city with no no family in place to help me. Um, I have family, obviously, but nobody really helping me. So I didn't realize like the toll that it was actually taking on me and our family of trying to do it at that time. 
So, I mean, it was, it was a lesson and I'm, and I'm able to share that with younger women, like, you know, just work on your timing. You know, it's not that you can't do these things. It's not that you don't have your own purpose and, you know, and then learning that if, if God put you together, some of that purpose is intertwined with the other person. So it's not all about you and what you want. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, getting to that oneness, it takes time and, Mm -hmm. and, um, it takes work and, you know, you're going to have some moments where it just gets really hard and thank God for grace because Mm -hmm. he has given us so many grace moments to, to put us back together when we were on opposite sides and feeling both of us feeling at different times. Like, I, I just don't know if I can keep the pace with trying to make you happy. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he's trying to keep everything running. He's going through just football in itself. And then injuries came into play and having to walk through that. I mean, it's just life, you know? And um, all I can say is I'm just very thankful for the grace of God that has really been the glue for my marriage is, is nothing but grace, nothing mm. but. What would you say one of the uh, greatest accomplishments uh, of your life outside of getting married, all that kind of thing? What would you oh, say? You, you knew I was going to come with that. The, the, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> outside my of family. Yeah. Um, what, would, what would you say one of your greatest accomplishments have been? I, you know, I would say the show that I started during the pandemic, out of everything that I've done, I've done some movie stuff and film stuff and all kind of other stuff, but this has been the, probably the most fun that I've had. Mm-hmm. It has been calming. It has been um, no pressure whatsoever. Like I can like just be me. Like, you know how they say party, uh, you know, business up top, party on the bottom, where it's like I can get in front of a camera and, you know, I might have my slippers on. and But I just get to get, I'm sitting in my home and I get to interview some amazing people and I get the honor and the privilege of just giving them whatever platform I have to tell their stories. And some of the stuff that we've experienced on the show, I'm just, I get off and I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Like, I never knew that it would be something like this that would give me so much joy and right. peace. Um, and I think it's just because I just let go and mm. I let go of all the things that I thought were expected of me. And I just turned on a thing and said, I'm just going to talk. I'm just going to ask questions and I'm just as happy as I can be. Yeah. yeah. So I would, I would say the live with Milani has been uh, a blessing. And for those that don't I'm know, sorry live about with this Milani. light is so bad. Oh, you get it. Oh, now, okay. now you, cause you light skin though, you know, <laughs> <laughs> touche, touche. <laughs> but but uh, live with Milani, uh, you show that show on YouTube, correct? Uh, it's actually on Instagram. It comes okay. on Instagram on a Friday night, 7 p.m. Um, where we probably won't have a show till the top of the year. Um, and we did a couple. I did one with some filmmakers where I took it out, but they live in town, and you know, mm. I, you know, we were we were almost getting out. Then they put us right back in. So uh. you know, I just you know whatever happens with it, I just know that it refocused me to really do what brings you joy. Like right. stop taking these gigs and these jobs that are just extremely stressful. Yeah. Now, did you find in, in doing your show, cause I, I'm, I'm finding that like, I feel like I still haven't gotten my, my footing with this show. Cause it's different from mm-hmm. a show I've done in the past and mm-hmm. I'm operating with a new persona. So yeah. have you found that, you know, in, in finding your groove with your show, you're still learning yourself and still finding things out about yourself as you do oh, show. Oh, big time, big yeah. time. And and it's cool because it's like I get I get to jump on when I want to technically. Mm-hmm. So, and then I can take it off if it's bad. <laughs> you know, like my first shows, the, it's like right now, this lighting, the light crazy. Um, you know, maybe the, the Wi-Fi was funky. And it's like you realize 
what we're in now, you can't control everything. Like, right. and then you realize everything doesn't have to be perfect. And pe- at people at the end of the day, they don't care. Right. They, they, if they want to be there with you, if they're enjoying your content, like, you know, have your face is dark, have <laughs> like, you got your, your green light in the wrong spot, you know, <laughs> you know, we've, we've seen enough high end this and that we've had Oprah and this one and that mm-hmm. one to where I think people just, they're, they're learning like, Y'all, we gotta stop putting so much pressure on ourselves. We just need to be people. Just need to be people. Yeah. People and just be in the moment. Yeah. Now, now I know it's been like uh, eighty-seven years since you were single, but right now, what would you say to a Way single? Way too long. <laughs> Way too long. <laughs> what would you, you say want to my a... advice? No, no, I, I don't know. Like, How long you guys been like, married? I got like Fred Flintstone advice. I'm not like way back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, the Cosby show advice. Okay, we've been married uh, 25 years. Okay, 25 years. Okay, cool. That's good. Uh, my aunt and uncle. Yeah, are, we've been married 25 years. They're coming up on 60 years in February. My aunt and uncle. That's amazing. That's yeah. so dope. Yeah. That's amazing. So, so, I'm, so you don't, I'm working you don't to get have there. any recent advice for, for people. You're talking about like. Well, I feel like I, I listen, I lived when I was a single woman, I lived. You know what I'm saying? I was in the deep in the trenches of the music industry, Hollywood, the whole nine. So I feel like I do understand some basic things. Yes, I'm not that far away from it. And I have daughters mm-hmm. and I have sons. So I'm, you know, some things they just are what they are. They're not going to change. You know what's crazy? So Milani? what's the question? <laughs> Yeah. I remember when your kids were babies and a couple wasn't even born yet. <laughs> now they're all no, grown. <laughs> if it was Charlotte, if it was Charlotte, I only had two. Yep. But what's so crazy, I had three by the time I left. So that'll tell you how fast I had children. Like they were stair step for real. Like yeah. I just had one when we got signed to Dallas and you know, I had her in Charlotte. <laughs> All right. So before we so, get out of here, what yes. nugget do you want to leave with the audience? Okay. So what's your audience? Who's your audience? Your audience is single you got, women? You got single parents. You got business owners. You have okay. uh, professionals. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say trust your instinct, Um, trust yourself. If God gives you a vision, then he gave it to you. And even if you don't feel qualified, you don't have to hand it off to somebody that you think could do it better. You need to keep it in your hand and invite people along to help you but just recognize that he didn't give it to them. He gave it to you and you have to trust yourself and you have to be confident that if he called you to it, then you are qualified to do it. Great advice. And in the midst of that, you got to take it easy on yourself. You can't beat yourself up. You got to get up. You make a mistake, dust off, keep it moving. Great advice. Uh, if people want to connect with you online, how can they do so? And and I saw I was supposed to have the little thing across there with the at and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was struggling to get online at first, so I was rushing like, oh my god, I'm supposed to be on this interview. But um, everything is under my name, which is M E L A N I, last name I S M A I L. Milani Ismail. So my Facebook, uh, YouTube, Instagram, all it. And then if there's any shows, typically it's under live with Milani. Okay. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much for being on Off the Fence. And I thank you for helping my audience uh, get off the fence tonight. And uh, we're going to have to do this again very soon. Man, I would love to. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back anytime, anytime, anytime. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your patience and waiting on me to get on as well. All right, not a problem at all. Thank you so much. Thank we'll you. See you later.
Alright. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just like this. I have the radio on the telly. 